Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're doing a let's play of Kido Butai, Japan's carries at Midway, a solitaire game. Um, this one is a small Ziploc game that was released by, uh, I believe it was only released in Europe, although it is available pretty cheaply for shipping, or sometimes Noble Knight Games has it in stock, um, from Dr. Richter Conflict Simulation. Make games, not war. This is the second edition. It is designed by Benjamin Richter. Graphics by Evelyn Duell. Um, this Let's Play, you may notice from the title. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'll explain now. Uh, it says casual. Um, what that means is this is not my usual you know, teaching or sort of really dedicated playthrough where I am have everything memorized or at least as much as I can and trying to run through everything. Um, this is a let's play where I'm just going to kind of play the game casually. Um, I'll explain it as I go, um, but it's not a full teaching. It's not a full um, kind of thing like that. Basically, I just want to play the game. I want to get it on video. I know there are a couple videos of this game out there, which is funny considering it is such a small release game, um, such a limited game. But um, I wanted to play this one and I wanted to share with you guys. So we'll dive right in. Um, in Kido Butai, um, you are playing the Japanese um, the board is very small. As you can see, this is the entire board here, uh, rather abstracted. Um, we have our carriers, our Japanese, four Japanese carriers down here. We have our squadrons of planes. We have bombers, um, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers. And then there are our zero fighters. Um, there's Island of Midway is represented here. Turn track. And then when it comes time to discover the U.S. fleet, we'll be placing them out here. Um, I know you can't see the actual um, bowls, but it uses a like a chit draw system. Yeah, I think you guys can see where it says U.S. fleet pool, U.S. bomber pool, U.S. fighter pool. So each of these is filled with appropriate counters. And I'll be drawing blind from them um, at the appropriate times. As the Japanese, obviously our mission is to cause as much damage to the Americans. In particular, we want to discover the American fleets and sink them. Um, game plays really quick, especially once you're used to it. It's a little fiddly. Um, you're probably gonna see that as I play, as I'm adjusting the counters. That can be a little bit and uh, a little annoying when you're playing, and I imagine as you guys are gonna watch, you're probably gonna say, okay, can I hurry it up here. But like I said, this is a casual playthrough, so if me kind of playing a little slower and kind of taking my time, maybe double checking rules bothers you, I know the game very well, fairly well and the rules aren't that hard but you know I might still have to check the rules and I don't necessarily intend to pause it unless it's a big deal um, but if that's going to bother you guys you can go ahead and skip ahead maybe skip ahead to where you see you know you'll see, start seeing more counters out here you might know okay we have an attack on carriers we have an attack on midway and then you can watch that part so just a heads up on that all right I think everything is good to go is set up so let's go ahead and begin um, the game is carried out in three phases depending on if reconnaissance has been successful or not there's a Japanese phase. The Japanese go first. Um, we, we'll be launching, landing, or attacking with our different squadrons. A mutual reconnaissance phase, depending on, like I said, if the reconnaissance has been successful or not. And then the Americans have the final phase, and then it's the next turn. So, turn marker up here. What do we at here? 0430 in the morning. All right, 0430. First turn, let's begin. Japanese phase. All right, so what I'm going to do, I haven't discovered American carriers yet. Um, so what I need, I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna launch an attack on Midway. I don't necessarily want to launch everybody though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send, I'll send one fighter with them. And if you notice, and I'll, exp I'll explain here as we go, there's a compass here. And that is important. The fact that, so facing up as you're watching. Um, so the way if you're facing this way, that is east, south, west, and then north is to my left. Um, to your left as well so that is important because as we play we will be and this is the fiddly part moving the counters rotating them basically to determine kind of where they are what stage they are and whether they have to land or not if they are cap and they're about to run out of fuel all right so when we put them in the middle so when we're saying okay i'm gonna set i'm gonna launch an attack to midway first turn carriers you launch which you can either only launch or land in the same turn with the carrier so we're gonna launch, but it's the very beginning, so we're definitely getting some uh, planes up in the air here. We're gonna send a carrier, or excuse me, send a fighter. And I'm gonna send, let's see, I have three here. 
I'm gonna send all three of these bombers and then we're gonna send, so is it three more? Three more. And I'm not gonna put up a cap yet because the Americans um, have not discovered my fleet and actually they have to wait till the third turn before they can launch an attack. So right now I'm, I'm good with the guys I have. I'm good, I'm gonna keep them on the decks, refueling, and I'm gonna go ahead and send um, this fighter and these bombers to attack midway. That was the first part of the Japanese phase. Now for the mutual reconnaissance phase, I would use your roll one die for each side, which I have two dice, colored dice. Um, for most of the game here, I'll be rolling these. Um, red is for the Japanese, blue is for the Americans. And what you're doing in reconnaissance phase, you're rolling D1D6 for each side um, until you either find the Japanese fleet or the American fleet or both or whatever. Um, and then that side stops rolling unless you're the Japanese and you find the American fleet, but it's only part of the American fleet. Um, I'll explain if that situation develops. So, Constance face, roll for both. All right, a one in a, so one in American, two for Japanese. That means we have not, no one's located each other's fleets for this turn. So, the American phase, which has actually skipped the first two turns no matter what. Even if they had found my fleet, it skipped the first two turns. So now we go back to the Japanese phase of turn two, which, oh, 0530. Now here's where we start rotating. So it's the next turn. Um, we would, If we had a cap, we would rotate them because it showed they were using up fuel. We do not have a cap up yet. Um, our guys, our, the rest of our fighters are gonna, and bombers are going to stay here on the carriers waiting to discover the American fleet. Um, and what we are going to do, though, we're going to go ahead and send these guys. Now from the middle, they're at midway. They can't attack yet. They'll attack next turn. So it takes one turn to go to the middle, one turn to another turn to go where you are, and then a third turn you conduct an attack and go back to the middle, and the fourth turn you go back to land. So it take, you kind of got to plan ahead a little bit on your attacks when you're staggering them. So we're gonna go ahead and put a zero fighter up here, and what we do, because he's now, so they went to the middle facing east, now when they go to their objective here, their target, I think is the, what the game uses, you rotate them to the south. So, go to their target, rotate to the south. Again, this is where it gets a little fiddly, especially managing all these little counters. So I do apologize if you know, you're know you watching, you're just kind of like, oh, it's, he's just moving these counters around, it takes forever. Again, this is more of a casual one. I do apologize, it does take a minute to do that. All right, so these guys are waiting. Let's see, we're not gonna do anything with these. Okay, so we are good for the Japanese phase. Mutual reconnaissance, we'll go ahead and conduct that phase. Roll for both sides. All right, so Japanese are four. We need a six. We need to roll a six to find the American fleet. And the, ja and the Americans need to roll five or six to discover my Japanese fleet. Neither happened. So, go on to the American phase. Turn two. Basically skip the turn two, especially because they haven't discovered my fleet. They can't do anything. So, we'll go on to the next turn. Time advances an hour. 0630 hours. Now we'll conduct our attack on midway. How this works is, um, we're going to look, we're going to, because it's, uh, we're conducting the attack, we look at this U.S. fighter pool. I'm going to shake these up a little bit. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is start drawing from the U.S. fighter pool without looking. First one, no fighters. Oh, wow. So we're going to be able to unleash um, a strong attack on them. And in fact, let me double check a rule and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, we're back. I want to double check. Um, there's a case where when you're attacking... Um, fleets or any fleet is attacked, I should say. So whether it's U.S. carriers or Japanese carriers, if there's no fighter coverage against them, no fighter defenses, um, the attack is significantly more successful. I mean, like it, it will obliterate the enemy. But it doesn't appear to fly. It just says fleets keeps it. It just says fleets in the rulebook. So we're gonna go with that, and we're gonna say that doesn't apply to midway. All right. So there's no fighter coverage. So our zero doesn't have anyone to fight. So he just kind of chills. Um, and what we're gonna do is. Have each of our bombers, we have six different bomber squadrons, and they're going to try to bomb midway. Um, when you roll for bombing, you roll a 1d6. And when you are bombing midway, you damage it on a roll of six. A damage would flip it over. And then if we get a second damage, that will um, destroy it. What's kind of interesting is that you can see there's a number on here. Hopefully you can see that. It's it's really, it's actually kind of hard to see. Um Hopefully the focus is on now. Okay, good. Um, it's number three. When you damage it, flip it over, and it'll say a two. 
that then reduces the capacity of the air squadrons by one, and I would actually eliminate a bomber or fighter from squadron, U.S. squadron, obviously, from the game. All right, but let's see if we even cause any damage. So we need to roll six on a D6. Since we have six attack, I'm just going to, I'm not going to roll my die six times. I'm going to roll these other dice, six of these. I think it's kind of fun to like chucking dice, right? A handful of dice. All right, so we want sixes to try to damage midway. Boom, two sixes. I've played games where literally I attacked with six or more and then get a single six, like six or more squadrons. Two sixes, awesome. So not only is midway um, damaged, it's actually completely destroyed, which means they, the American, first of all, that counts for me for victory points, which is awesome. And secondly, that reduces their, um, the bombers and fighters, uh, how many available they have available in the game. Let me check, let me pause again and check the rule book to see how I will uh, eliminate, remove them from the game. All right, so according to the rules, the way it works is that they're um, eliminated from the turn record track as they're supposed to come back. Um, so it's, it's instead of taking them directly out of the pool, they just don't get returned to the game, which is an interesting way to do it. Um, as a reminder, I'm going to kind of put midway over here on the turn track. So just to kind of ignore that. <laughs> midway is not floating in the middle of nowhere. Um, midway is there to remind me, hey, um, I need to remove three over time, three bombers or fighter squadrons. Um, as we remove them, also, each time you remove a fighter bomber, you remove one of these no fighter. And I probably should have showed you guys the counters um, up close before we, we restarted. I do apologize for that. But uh, basically, there's American dive bombers, American torpedo bombers, Japanese dive bombers, Japanese torpedo bombers. And there's carriers for each side as well. Um, then there's these no fighter and no bomber um, dummy chits which that influences the game when it comes to drawing. Like we just, you just saw, I drew a no fighter, which means there was no fighter coverage, no cap over midway, which definitely hurt them. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead. No fighters, um, during the Japanese phase, um, they get placed three turns ahead. Anything that gets, that survives, quote unquote, gets placed, doesn't get placed right back in the pool for the Americans, it actually gets placed one, two, three. Three ahead if it's during the Japanese phase, Five ahead if it's during the American phase. All right, so that was a successful attack. Midway was eliminated. So now what we do is, back to the fiddly part, slightly fiddly, go ahead and send our guys back to the middle and we rotate them so they're facing west. And that reminds you, hey, they're just in case you forget, they're not headed, headed out to attack somewhere, they're headed back to the bases. They're also getting low on fuel. All right, I believe that's it for Japanese turn. Yeah, that's all we're gonna do for the Japanese turn here our Japanese phase, I'm sorry. Um, let's do the mutual reconnaissance phase. Let's get all these dice out of here. So we'll go ahead and roll for both. <clears throat> okay, neither, they haven't discovered uh, either one yet. So that means the, the American phase, um, beginning with turn three, which it is turn three. If the Japanese fleet has been found, it has not found though. So we're not gonna launch any bombing raids on the Japanese fleet, not yet anyway. All right, we're gonna go ahead and have all these guys, they're gonna come in now, and what they'll do is they'll face north, so rotate, you know, this way, so they're facing north as they land. Um, remember, carriers can only land or launch, not both, but that's okay, because we're gonna have a Kagi here is gonna land, and then same thing with Kaga is gonna have landing. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to launch from Soru, or Soryu, sorry if I pronounce it wrong. We're gonna launch one fighter to go up into our cap because we want to start having a cap just because you never know when the Japanese, excuse me, the Americans are going to discover our fleet. So, okay, was that the beginning? Oh, I did forget to move the turn marker, apology. So it's 0730. That was a Japanese phase. They landed and I launched one cap onto the mutual reconnaissance phase, roll for both. Oh, oh, here we go. So four and a six. So I got a six, or excuse me, I got a four, which no good. I need a, I literally need a six to discover the carriers. So my scouts are out there looking and scouring the ocean. They cannot find those damn American carriers. But the Americans found me. Uh-oh. So what that means is now going to the American phase, they will now attack me. Um, they will launch bombing raids every single turn during the American phase. I'm glad I put that cap up there. So what we do is our old bomber pool. So instead of the fighter pool, we're drawn from the old bomber pool. Let's go ahead and start drawing. First one is, okay, so one bomber. Two bombers. All right, and then no bomber, so that ends it. 
At the same time, we then see if they have a fighter escort. So you start drawing from the fighter pool. One fighter. Two fighters. And then no fighters. All right, this is actually a pretty strong force. We are prob we may be in trouble here. All right, so how it works is before you determine, you have to see if they're gonna be dive bombers or torpedo bombers. Um, very simple, you just roll the die for them. One, one to three, they are torpedo bombers. Four to six, they are dive bombers. Okay, they're dive bombers. What, because what happens is, and this is, you know, if, if you know about Midway, the Battle of Midway, it's historical where the Japanese cap at one point were, because they were defending the, against the torpedo bombers, were uh, at low altitude, they were flying low, they weren't able to get high enough again, and because of that, the American dive bombers were able to successfully attack the Japanese carriers. So to simulate that, if they come in at torpedo level, we have to switch our cap over to low, low cap, I don't know if you can read it, but it says low cap when you flip it over. And then he stays that way for a complete turn. This turn being into the next turn, and then turn after that, he can go back to, to higher up, which you pretty much always want to do. But they came in as dive bombers, so I can stay normal. So just like when we attacked um, the Americans, theoretically anyway, although they didn't have any fighters, you send in the fighters first, fighter versus fighter combat. Um, now they're going to go ahead and shoot at each other. Um, so for air combat... American fighters eliminate Japanese fighters on a six, and Japanese fighters eliminate American fighters on a five or six. So you roll. Let's roll for these first two. Neither happens. So basically, they're both um, basically no effect from either of them. And now we go ahead and, which I actually forgot to do this in Midway, but um, oops, anti aircraft fire. That's okay. I only would have rolled once, so I don't, I don't think it would have affected it. Ooh, oopsies. See, like I said, I forget to roll here there. So what we're gonna do is, so now that the, so we're gonna, basically they're done. So these two are done. And the, this extra fighter, he can't do anything. So he's just chilling as well. We'll just set him aside for now. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the two dive bombers come in to launch their attacks. Um, now we have one, two, three, four carriers. And we're gonna roll four dice for um, anti-aircraft. Um, American bombers are born on a six and Japanese bombers on a five or six. So these American bombers, um, these dive bombers, I have to roll six. Four carriers, even though I get to roll four times. Any sixes causes one to abort. Boom. I got one six, so one of them will abort. We're going to set them aside. So now one dive bomber gets to come in. He's going to attack, and there's a way they want you to attack uh, Kagi first, Kaga, and then I believe Soru and Hairu. Again, apologies for the how I'm pronouncing them. So the first dive bomber here is going to attack a Kagi. All right, let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and roll for him. Which, bombing, uh, carriers are damaged on a five or six, so. Four, just miss, just miss. So ineffective bombing, Akagi survives. All right, so everyone is moved along. So what we do is, kind of like I explained before with the record, or the moving them three ahead when it was attacked during the Japanese phase, during the American phase, they get moved five ahead. That's to show that you know, they had to travel a lot farther to attack the Japanese fleet. Therefore, it's going to take, you know, five hours to get back and be available again as opposed to just three. So go ahead and gather up all our little guys here. Um, I know, exciting watching me gather up counters. And we'll go ahead and put these one, two, three, four, five. So we'll put them up here at 1230 hours. And same with both of the, um, both the dummy counters as well. All right, and then our zero fighter, he stays exactly where he was. Um, everything's good. And that is the end of the American phase. So now next turn, move the turn record track to 0830. Um, so Japanese phase, to rotate our zero fighter to the to the south to show that he's used up some fuel. Um, geez, I need to, I really need to find those American fleets. It's, I destroyed Midway, but I need to find those American fleets. So my reconnaissance, I wish, I do wish there was a way to boost your reconnaissance, maybe commit, you know, a fight, a zero squadron, fighter squadron, something like that to long range reconnaissance. I understand that doesn't fit thematically, but just for the game purposes, you could help increase your chances if you can't find them. But anyway, um, let's go on. I'm not going to launch anything. I can't launch an attack on Midway because it's already been destroyed. Um, and I can't, I cannot, one of the rules and the rules are very clear. You cannot launch, say bombers to the middle and hope that you just happen to find, um, 
find the carriers and then you can go ahead and move them there next turn. It doesn't work that way. You have to know they're there first before you launch. So should I put another cap up though? Oh, actually I need to, my bad, I also need to rotate everybody. Remember those the units I landed last turn? So now they finished rotating, which means they are facing east, which means they are refueled and rearmed and ready to go. So apologies if you hear in the background, those are my dogs. Um, I think they're bored right now. All right, so we have, okay, everyone's rotated, everyone's set, perfect. Should I launch another? Zero is capped though, I don't know. It's dangerous, and a lot of the Americans keep attacking me. Eh, yeah, so I'm gonna do put one up here as cap. So I'm gonna have two for cap, and he's gonna be facing east. Um, all right, cool, so let's go on to the reconnaissance phase. Now the Americans already know I'm here, so they're just gonna keep launching bomber raids every turn. But I have to keep rolling, because I have to discover American fleet. Five. No, it has to be a six. Oh, man. All right, well, that's okay. So that means I did not discover anything, which means American phase, which means they start launching bombers. Let's see what we got here. All right, here's one. And then no bomber. So they're sending one bomber. And they're sending... Fighter. And then... So one bomber and one fighter to attack. Um, again, we have to determine if the bombers are going to be dive bombers or torpedo bombers. It's a two. That means they're torpedo bomber. So what that means is, so flip them over to show these torpedo bomber coming in. Um, we have to, if we're going to meet him and not have him be, have a super effective attack, we have to flip over one of our guys to low, which I think I'm going to do the one that's a little bit lower in fuel. So we have my low cap. So he's going to go ahead and meet this fighter and defend against the fighter. Um, should I do the other one too? Oh man, maybe I should. Um, kind of hurts me though if I don't. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do both too. That way they both can meet them. So we're gonna have one. So the two fighters are gonna meet. Go ahead and roll for them. Air to air combat. He destroys me. I do not destroy him. So good for them. Good for them. All right. And then we will do. Um, so he's set aside for now. And now I have our the bombers gonna come in, and I'm gonna shoot at the bomber. See if I can knock that bomber out of this guy. Bombers are aborted on a three or four, eliminated on a five or six. So four, which means he's aborted. So he's not eliminated, but he is. He has to abort his mission. Um, otherwise, I would have destroyed him. All right, so I do stop an attack on my carriers directly. Go ahead and gather these guys up, and we're going to go ahead and place them five turns, five hours ahead on the turn record track. And remember, we're going to have, um, because of the midway thing, we're going to have three of them that get obliterated, taken away, but... I can get them here. One, two, three, four, five. So 1330. So right next to this other stack here. All right. So that was the end of the American phase. Um, go back to the Japanese phase. So we'll move the turn track here, which looks like there's a no fighter dummy, which gets to go ahead and go into the fighter pool. Um, and now it is 0930 hours. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Let's see here. All right, so the beginning of the turn. Sorry, my dogs are distracting me. I apologize. You can tell, this is, this is why this is a casual playthrough here. My freaking dogs are driving crazy. All right, um, rotate our cap facing west. And then we definitely want to launch another one, no matter what. Um, so we want to be, uh, we want to have a uh, high cap as well, besides just the low cap available. Because um, otherwise it could be very bad for us. All right. But we still know where the Japanese, uh, excuse me, we don't know where the uh, U.S. fleet is, the U.S. carriers, so we have to skip the rest of our phase while we're waiting. Uh, mutual reconnaissance. And this is where, like I said before, maybe the game could have a way of me of increasing my chances or, you know, something like that, just because it does get to be where here I've just, I've already obliterated midway, and yet I can't do anything. I'm just waiting to discover the Americans. But then again, I guess that is uh, somewhat historically accurate. Anyway, let me roll for my reconnaissance. Nope, it's a two, so no good. So there's another wasted turn for me. But they're going to go ahead and they're going to send their bombers to attack me. So one bomber. And just the one. And then for fighters. Okay, no fighters. So it's just the bomber coming in. Um, we're going to see if he is high or low. He's low, coming in as a torpedo. Fortunately, I already have a, already have a low cap. So I will have the low cap attack the bomber. Um or four he's aborted five or six destroyed four so he is aborted so he makes no no attack on my carriers 
Go ahead and stick these all five. One, two, three, four, five ahead. So 1430. All right, and that is the end of the American phase. Let's go to the Japanese phase, move the turn marker up. We're at 1030 hours. Go ahead and rotate our caps, which this low cap here, I can switch him back to high, but also because he's facing north, that means he has to land. So I'm gonna go ahead and have him land. Um, have him land over here. Well, actually, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm gonna land right here. All right, so I have one cap out there. I think that'd be good enough for now. Um, all right. Constance phase, come on, six, come on, six, uh, two. Okay, so I can't do anything, so Americans attack. Let's go ahead and it's no bomber. They don't attack. And now I don't pull from the fighter pool because there's no bomber attack. So I don't see why they'd send any fighters. So no bomber. And then one, two, three, four, five. He goes five ahead. That's it for the American phase. So next turn, 1130 hours. Go ahead and rotate our cap and then rotate this zero here. Let's see, should I launch another cap? I'll wait, I'll wait a turn to launch. All right, let's do the reconnaissance phase. Only a two, so I do not discover the American fleet. Um, American phase. That's one. Okay, so one bomber is going to attack along with one fighter. And no fighter. Okay, so interesting. All right, so let's roll ahead and roll. Maybe I should have sent up the other cap. Oh, well. All right, let's go ahead and roll for their high or low on the bomber. Five, so he's coming as a die bomber, so that's all right. So my zero stays high, but the fighters, they're gonna attack each other. All right, one and three. So no effect, neither of them is shot down, but they do just kind of cancel each other out. So now we go ahead, the dive bomber's gonna go ahead and attack. Um, we're gonna roll for our anti-aircraft fire, which we have, what, four carriers? So we're gonna go ahead and roll four dice. Hits on a six. No sixes, which means he successfully is going to come in and at least get a chance. He's going to dive bomb the Akagi. He's going to drop his bomb. Um, he will damage one of my carriers on a five or a six. Three. So no damage to any of my carriers, thankfully for me. Whew. Dodge that bullet. Or should I should say dodge that dive bomb, I guess. All right. Go ahead and place these guys five ahead on the turn track. That was crazy. All right, so on to the next turn. So we're gonna go ahead is we're gonna move the turn track to 12, 30 hours. And notice we have a bunch of guys here. Now remember, this midway counter, we're gonna go ahead and we have three, we have to get rid of three. So what we'll do is, we'll kind of see what they are. Let's get rid of the dummies first. We have a fighter, fighter, dive bomber, and a dive bomber. So it's gonna be one of each, and then either a fighter or a dive bomber, the game says to randomize if you're if it's even. Since there's one of each, it's even. Go ahead and do the dive bomber is even. Fighter is odds. Five is odd, so the fighter is destroyed. Let's go ahead and remove these three. So remove what two fighters and one bomber from the game. Um, when we do that, we also want to remove the equivalent number of dummy counters. So what is it? Two bom two excuse me one, two fighters one bomber. So there's a bomber. There's a fighter. I'm gonna get rid of one more fighter. Where's a fighter? A fighter dummy counter. There's one. All right, so fighter dummy, dummy counter. And that is that. Well, we can put midway aside because that finally lived up to the hype. Um, and so they had the one bomber that, sur that survived, quote unquote, the, the midway destruction. And go ahead and set him in the bomber pool. There you go. All right, so now my turn. Um, we're gonna rotate this cap, so he has to go ahead and land, land him over here, and I will obviously then definitely launch a new cap. Um, still can't launch an attack because I don't know what the US fleet carriers are. Or do I? Reconnaissance phase, Ugh, four, so nothing. Um, <laughs> that means, okay, on to, the, on to the American phase. All right, no bomber, so go ahead, and that goes ahead, one, two, three, four, five, all right. On to the next phase, excuse me, next turn. Let's go ahead and move the turn counter up to 1.30 in the afternoon. And all these guys go back in their pools. We have a bomber, a fighter, and a no bomber dummy. All right, rotate our cap and rotate this zero to get him ready 
go ahead and we're gonna skip the rest of our phase, um, Japanese phase, nothing else to do, except roll for reconnaissance. Four, we still have not discovered them. So now the Americans possibly launch a bomber raid. Um, one bomber, two bombers, and then no bomber. And then see if they have a fighter escort. Yep, they have one fighter and that's all that was in there. So there's one fighter escort. Now we see if the bombers are going to be um, dive bombers or torpedo bombers. A six is a dive bomber. So they both stay as dive bombers, so they stay high. Our zero goes out to meet the Buffalo fighter here. They meet in combat, air combat. Um, I roll a six, which means that I eliminate him. He roll a five, he does not eliminate me, he needs a six. So I successfully eliminate the Buffalo, remove him from the game. Um, and I am survived. However, the two bombers are now gonna come on in for their attack. Let's go ahead and roll for anti-aircraft fire from our carriers. Four carriers, get four rolls. No sixes. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So now the first one will attack Akagi and the second one will attack Kaga. Go ahead and roll for each one. Number five or six causes a hit. A two, Kagi misses. And then on Kaga, five, that's a hit. Oh man. So what that does is you flip him over to a two and he had what do you have on him he had three units on him so one of these bombers is destroyed so you flip him over hopefully you guys could have could, you saw that he has a four on him which means he can hold four units flipped over to a two since he had three one of these is automatically eliminated from the game and he'll only be able to hold two from here on out so which he has two already so that fighter here is not gonna have anywhere to land so it's gonna be bad news for him um Although I think we're down one, maybe on another ship. Oh, we are. Okay, so he'll have something. He'll be able to land on the other plane. Anyway, um, so these guys were moderately successful. They damaged Kaga anyway. Go ahead and place them five ahead. One, two, three, four, five. So at 1830. Well, with the no bomber. All right, on to the next turn. Go ahead and move the turn marker up to 1430. This bomber goes back to the pool. No bomber goes to the pool. No fighter goes to the no fighter or fighter pool. All right, my turn. Go ahead and rotate. I think that was the only thing I had to rotate, right? Yep. Um, and then I'm not gonna send up a cap yet. I'm gonna wait. We're gonna do our reconnaissance. Two, so not discover the American fleet yet. Go on to the American phase. See if they're gonna send any bombers. Oh, they're sending one. And then, so one bomber. And then we we'll draw from the fighter, which I remember <laughs> we only have the no fighter in there. So. One bomber heads in. Our fighter is going to go to meet him. So our fighter is going to attack the bomber. Five, which he has eliminated then actually. So he's eliminated from the game. So good job, fighter. Good job. And these guys go five ahead. One, two, three, four, five. So the very last turn. All right, that's it for the American phase. So we go on to the next turn. 15, 30 hours. Go ahead and place that back in the bomber pool. Um, Japanese phase. Zero, it's gonna be rotated. He has to land now, which he can't land on Kaga because they're full up with just the two bombers now because of damage. That's okay though, there's room on Hyru down here so you can go ahead and land there. And now we're gonna go ahead and send up a cap from Soru. Boom. All right, now let's go on to the constant phase. Two, so he does not discover the American fleet carriers yet. We don't. Um, the American phase, go ahead and draw from the bomber pool. One bomber is coming in hot. Two bombers are coming in hot. And then no bomber. So two bombers. And there were no fighters in the pool. So the bombers are coming in unescorted. Bad news for them. Because our zero fighter is going to go meet the first one. Oh, but he only rolls a one. So no effect. So he is his uh, terrible cap, terrible pilot. So they get to keep on coming in. Now we roll for anti-aircraft from our four carriers. We got here. Um, no sixes, so both bombers are gonna come in. One's gonna attack Akaga, excuse me, Akagi, one's gonna attack Kaga. The one attacking Akagi, oop, a blue die for them. Six, that really sucks. So he flips over, so it's a two. So I have to eliminate two units. I'm gonna eliminate this zero, and I'm gonna eliminate one bomber. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and the other one's gonna attack. So the, the last bomber's gonna attack Kagi. Um, Kaga, excuse me. Okay, one, two, six, five. 
which when you're bombing carrier, damage on a five or six. So he is destroyed. So he's eliminated out of the game. And both bombers he had are also destroyed. This is not a good game for the Japanese. I am not, not feeling. But the Battle of Midway is definitely going to end historically, or at least not good for us. Um, we're not as bad as historically, but definitely not good for the Japanese. All right, so both dive bombers, they go ahead five on the turn track. Now, if you notice, the turn track does not have enough spaces left. One, two, three, four, and then it's done. So we go ahead. I just put them on the end off the map. Basically, that means they're not going to come back in time to affect the rest of the game. But that's okay. So I just stack them up at the end here. All right, well, that's horrible for the Japanese. Okay, let's go on to the next turn. So turn track moves up to, turn mark moves up to 1630. Then put this fighter back, this bomber, bomber dummy, and fighter dummy. All right. Now I, I'm going to rotate this guy and then rotate this one. I'm still waiting just to see the American fleet carriers, so let's see what we can do. Reconnaissance phase. Four. Cannot locate. Now it's the American phase. One bomber. Two bombers. No bomber. So two bombers will come in. I think I forgot to roll high or low last time. Oops. Whatever. And we'll see if there's going to be an American escort. There will not be. So no fighter escort. So it's just the bombers. Um, see if they're high or low. So they're coming in. That's a three. It means you're coming in as torpedo bombers. You flip them over. So I'm going to have to um, flip over to a low cap to fight them. Go ahead and I'm going to attack the first one. See what I can do here. Remember, a three or higher is good for me. A one, no effect. All right, so they're coming in hot. It's going to be Akagi and Soru. But we have three carriers left. They're going to use anti aircraft fire. Hits on sixes, five, four, and three. That's no hits, so they're gonna come in and attack. All right, first torpedo bomber on Akagi. Let's see what he does. A five, which means he destroys Akagi. That's a hit, and both bomb bombing squadrons are obviously eliminated. They sink into the ocean. Um, and then the last torpedo attack, Soru. Two, so no hit on there. So thankfully, I've only lost my two strongest carriers instead of three of my carriers. That's awesome. All right. These guys will go off the map because that's five turns ahead is off the map. Yeah. Um, wow. That's Japanese are probably done here. But you know what? We're not giving up yet. Um, let's go to the next turn. So the turn marker, move it up. No bomber marker. Goes in there. 1730 hours. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my cap down to here. Um, let's see. We're going to... I can't really do anything else. Let's roll for reconnaissance. They're trying to find the U.S. fleet. A four. We're not able to locate the U.S. fleet. It's not looking good. So I don't think there's enough turns left to launch an attack anymore. So I think we're probably just going to get obliterated here. Um, let's see. Oh, no bomber. All right. So we skip the American phase because, well, no bombers attack me this turn. Um, go ahead and move the turn counter up. Bomber. Dummy. Bomber. Bomber. Go in the bomber pools. All right, it's 1830, so there's this. There's only two turns left, including this one. Rotate everybody. I can put him back high, although he's going to have to land now. So I'm going to have him land, and then I'm going to send out my last zero as a cap. I'm going to go ahead to the reconnaissance phase. A two, so I'm unable to locate the American carriers. Um, so the Americans are going to go ahead and launch an attack. With one. With two. Okay, so two, and then we'll see if they have any fighters attack with. Yep, they got one. Um, then we're going to roll to see if they're gonna, their bombers are going to die high or low. High, so they stay as die bombers. So my zero and the buffalo will fight. They'll fight each other. The, I believe, let's see, air combat. Um, I eliminated him on a five. He does not eliminate me, so I'm able to eliminate him. However, that score does neutralize me. So now both bombers will come in to attack one on Soru and one on Hiru. Um, go ahead and roll for anti-aircraft fire. Two carriers. Oh, one of them's destroyed. I'm going to go ahead and destroy... Let's see what do I got here. Well, I got three units here, so destroy um, this dive bomber. I don't know if it works that way or if, I just, or if I do it before they pick a target. I don't know. That's all right. You know what? This is the way it is. So this last one's going to attack Hiru here. And go ahead and roll. All right, I have to roll the attack. There's a bomb, die bombing attack on Hiru. 
A five, so he is damaged, so we flip him over from a three to a one. And we had he had two bombers, so go ahead and eliminate one of those bombers. Um, so we have one functional carrier. It's the end of that turn, which is not good for me. I have one fully functional carrier, although it's one of my weaker carriers, and I have one damage weak carrier. Both my strong carriers have been eliminated. Um, some tells me I think I'm going to lose this game. All right, so we go on to the last turn here, turn marker. Put the bomber back and fighter back, dummies. It's 1930, last turn of the game. I can't even, I don't have time to make it to the carries if I discover them. Um, let's move him back, rotate, rotate. We're going to flee. Um, these fighters and go up his cap, and these two carriers are going to get out of dodge or get out of here. Um, but that's not an option. So now we're going to go ahead and roll for Constance. A two, so I failed to discover the very last turn. I failed to discover the American carriers. Go ahead and roll to see if they, before I can get out of here. Oh, no attacks, no bomber. So a small blessing, a small blessing. Turn, game over. Game ends with my not complete destruction, but close. That is Kido Butai, the Jap Japan's carriers at Midway solitaire game. Um, let me see what the victory, victory points were on that. I'm going to try to gauge it here quick. I'm going to take too long. Um, let's see. American victory point total subtracted from the Japanese total. Let's see. Um, enemy squadron destroyed is a quarter of a victory point. Round it up. So one, two. So I, just, I got two from destroying them, their squadrons. They, they got one, two, and a quarter, which rounded up. So three from me. Already not good. Um, so that's my, at minus one, or at negative one, excuse me. Enemy carrier damaged, one. They damaged one of mine, so that's another one for them. So they're at negative two. Um, carrier sunk, two victory points if Soru, Hairu, which they didn't get any of them, the damage in this room. Three of Akagi or Kaga, or an American carrier. Why did not destroy, I didn't even discover their carriers. So I lost both of these, so that's six. So now they're at what, negative eight? Um, Missouri base, uh, excuse me, Midway base destroyed, one. Oh, that's for me. So it goes from an, a negative eight to a negative seven. All right, what does that mean? Let's, let's take a look at the rule book here. What does that mean up here? Uh, negative six or less, major Japanese defeat. Uh, you know, historical result, I would assume. All right, again, that is Kido Butai, Japan's Carriers in Midway. A fun little game, you can see it plays pretty quick, and that was with me even talking, and talking in these games always adds up, always makes it take longer. Um, in reality, they play, when you're just sitting there playing and you're rolling dice and moving counters, it this game takes, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 if you're just taking your time. Um, obviously, it would, if I discovered the American carriers, and that's the main thing, and that's one of those things where clearly this game is very really luck-driven. I did not discover the American carriers. So I wasn't able to launch any attacks. What it would have been is if I discovered them during the reconnaissance phase, I would have drawn for carriers, and I would have placed them out depending on maybe all of them. Maybe a dummy would have made the carriers' fleet split up. Either way, I would have placed them over here, and so then when I, when I would have then launched my bombers... And I would have, you know, turned them torpedo bombers and to show that they're headed that way. And I would have launched them and I would have launched with fighter coverage, possibly, whatever. And it would have been kind of the same thing as when the Americans attack my carriers. I would, you know, any, I'd draw U.S. fighters to be a defensive cap. Then I would face anti-aircraft fire. And then if there was none of that or if I survived it, I would go in and make my attack runs on the American carriers. So... Hope you enjoyed my casual playthrough of and slight tutorial of Kido Butai. Um, I do recommend the game. Um, as you can tell, it's a little luck-based, a little fiddly, but it's also not expensive. It's fun to play. You get a little taste of Midway here, a little taste of the Battle of Midway, which, hey, um, right now, as of the filming of this video, in the future, that won't make sense, but in the filming of this video, there is a big... Um, uh, Midway movie has just been released in Hollywood, so go ahead and get you in the mood for that. Or if you're in the mood for a little Midway action, you can pick up this game. Um, I believe either Noble Knight Games has it, um, American Base, and if not, you can get it from their website. This Richter Kasim. I'll put a link in the video or in a comment. Um, but I know that his shipping is only like four bucks because it's a, it's a, it comes as a Ziploc, obviously. Um, the only thing you have to provide is your own your own die, your own dice. So, all right. That was my Kido Butai video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time.